Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of BC Buckets. I'm Matthew Bruni. Joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Colin, today we have Pacom Dadier from France, six foot eight, nineteen, almost nineteen years old. Mm-hmm. Once he gets drafted, uh, incredibly young player. This is a guy I was excited to do a deep dive on because there's a lot of young players here that in this draft that are kind of that are unproven, and he falls into that category, but when you watch him and you watch the highlights and then you start really diving into like what he's good at, there's a lot to like about this guy. And he's, he might be in my top 30 by the end of this. Oh, he's definitely my top 30 already. But I I mean, I, I I completely agree with you. I mean, not saying he's proven, but to me, he's a lot more polished than some of these younger guys. Um, A a guy he gets not compared to as a type of player, but just because of his age is to John saloon. And, they're both going to be pretty much the same age at draft day. And Pacom is so much more, he, he has the skills to where you can see what kind of player he can be and kind of almost will be. Whereas other players that you're seeing in the second round, or even sometimes in the late first round, it's you kind of, you see the potential, but you don't know what will actually happen with Pacom though. I see shooting. I see self-creation. Um, I see defensive upside. So those are all things that I see instantly when I watch him play as opposed to hoping will happen. Yeah. The, the shooting is really exciting because um, he shot 30 over 35% from three, almost 36% from three. Um, now to give context, played 59 games with ULM um, had some Euro cup games, you know, mixed in with league games uh, only played 15 minutes per game, uh, six, six and a half points, you know, two rebounds, uh, 0.6 assists. So not a ton of like, statistical work um in you know a professional league but the shooting potential is clearly there uh he actually moves really well off the ball as a cutter as a spot up guy like i thought the the understanding of the game on the offensive side of the ball was at a pretty high level and then as you go in you continue to dig and dig you're like the offensive rebounding was something that stands out as well he had 43 offensive rebounds on the year and a lot of them just straight putbacks (laughs) And that shows an aggression. It shows an eagerness to, you know, go get the ball and aggression. And I think that's you pair that with the shooting potential. And as well as I think there is just a a foundation for being like a decent enough or a good enough like passer and ball handler at this age. You put all that together and I think you have yourself a long term investment that I'm I'm good with with taking like that that's where i'm at with with become as far as far as his strengths what type of uh, i guess role do you see him because i i see two di- i guess different avenues where he could kind of go and one's being that like you mentioned off ball cutter that will spot up and then get you the rebounds and be the defender but then i also kind of see something where it's more on ball and he has the ball in his hands a little bit more and that's I the part know. that we haven't seen enough of yeah i i don't know if i can bet on him the, the playmaking yet at this point like yeah Give me three years, and if I if he continues to show it, then all right. But like, I'm fine with him being an off ball player. Like, I'm fine with him being a really solid off ball player and checking all those boxes. Like, if he just gets better at the things that I mentioned shooting, rebounding, cutting, you know, defense I, I have defense as a question mark for me. Um, uh, but like, if he gets better at those areas, I think we're looking at a long time starter in the league, you know, in, in five years and so on. So, those that's where I'm at with him. Um, I do think. Um, do you have anything else on the strengths before I go to the questions? Uh, no. Um, I have, like, the athleticism is there. It's kind of like I want him to be more explosive at yeah. times, but I think I might just be spoiled, you know, by you know seeing some of these other awesome athletes that we get to scout. Um, I did watch him the same day as Ryan Dunn, so that's just kind of like an unfair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <character. laughs> best defender but, in the draft. <laughs> yeah, but like you know, defensively, he had like less than a one percent steal rate. Like he's really not a playmaker. He's uh, still needs to grow into his body. Uh, the technique is not great, so the defense needs to improve. And then I'm interested to see him round out his offensive game, like you said, the off the dribble stuff. Uh, that's my biggest question, and. Ultimately, he's not. He's gonna barely gonna be 19 years old, you know, when the season starts. Um, I don't. I'm curious if he's like a draft and stash. I'm curious if he's G League for a year. Um, I don't think he's good enough to play right away, and I'm okay with that because I think by year two, maybe even you know year three, I think you're you're getting a, a pretty good, reliable contributor. 
Yeah. Um, to go off of other weaknesses, uh, mine are mainly on the offensive side. I think he's just too sloppy with the ball. Yeah. Um, you mentioned playmaking. I mean, if you're going to be a self creator in any way, you need to be able to pass the ball effectively. And I feel like just too often it's an accurate pass or a telegraph pass. And his assist to turnover ratio was only 0.71. So yeah. in limited minutes, that's not looking good. Um, so in order for him to, I guess, to hit the the ceiling that you'd want him to hit, yeah, that's what he's going to need to figure out. Uh, what kind of comps do you have? This was really hard. Yeah, it me. was really hard for me too. I was. I'm going to steal this straight from. Um, um, I forgot who it was on on no ceilings. Um, he said like a a Jeff Green type. Oh, that's actually a really good one, actually. And I was like, that's a good one. Cause you know, you get the shooting, you get the the rebounding defense, like you you get all those boxes that I mentioned checked off. And I think that that so shout out to No Ceilings. Um, I consume a lot of NBA draft stuff, and that one stood out to me as being like really um I wonder what KOC had. Or do you have one before I go to KOC's? Uh I was thinking I couldn't really put one down, but in terms of the off world, I was thinking like a Jay Crowder, but more fluid. Okay. More, more fluid Jay Crowder type. Yeah. I think he needs uh, to get there defensively, but defensively, um, yeah. KOC has Michael Finley, mm. which I don't love. Mm-mm. I don't love a lot of KOC's comps. Not a shot of KOC if he's watching this. I, I he's you know, definitely not watching this. You do good work, but um <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of I don't see that completely. Like maybe in 10 years, but not not at the moment. Um so uh, the last thing before I just want to wrap up on this real quick. To, it's funny we're to John Saloon, it felt like we we're tearing him down. Pacom Dadier, we I we build him up. Do you have Dadier above Saloon on your board? Uh yes. Now it's I getting don't. closer. It's getting closer. I moved Saloon up. Um actually no, I have him I have him below him. Sorry. I I moved Saloon up uh two days ago. Okay. And so he's above Pacom right now. But before originally Saloon was low. And I think after reading more about Saloon and, and understanding more of what he's kind of done up yeah. to this point it's it's gotten better but initially the initial impression of both these players I'm, i was definitely higher on pacom i'm um, slightly higher on saloon because he he physically is more ready like that yeah. you well, know that goes a long way to... that goes a long way i it, mean it for does, a lot of it does and i understand like daddy is a better shooter daddy honestly is a better like rebounder and even like a uh, finisher at the rim at this point but i don't know if it's just a bias or something, but like Saloon physically looks like he held up better in the league, which, which matters. Well, I so. think it, I think the, the reason why I have Saloon higher than Pacom, despite, like I said, like I said before, him being more polished than Saloon is just because that's what separate. Like when you think college, there's a lot of good college basketball players that are only good college basketball players because they don't have the bodies yeah. to get to the NBA and you need to have an NBA ready body. And he's not quite there yet. And like you said, year one, year two, year three after the G League or maybe a draft and stash, um, I definitely think he'll be a good player. But to your point about Saloon, yeah, the, his body is definitely there. And he's, if he's able to put together any of the shooting, then, you know, NBA player. Yeah, we'll attach this to the end of our initial Saloon video. So that way people uh, <laughs> get our get our complete thoughts on Tijan Saloon. But anyways, uh, that's all we got for you all today. Hope you all enjoyed the video and we will talk to you all later.